everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. And today's video, I just wanted to go over how I personally choose to handle returns, exchanges, refunds, all of that fun stuff when it comes to running a business. And before I get into anything, I know that this topic is kind of something that is so personal and unique to every single business. So I want you to know watching this video that if you choose to do something different and run your business differently than I do when it comes to returns, just know that it is okay. The way that I choose to do business, it doesn't make me better or worse than any, anybody else. If you choose to accept returns, not accept returns, handle situations differently, I just thought it may be helpful to explain after how long has it been? Almost three years in business. It's been about two and a half years. March of 2023 will be three years in business for me. And basically how I choose to run my business and handle returns. So my return policy on my website is that any customer that purchases from me is able to get a refund or an exchange on any item within 14 days of the purchase price. And this can pretty much be for any reason. Now I kind of assess each situation differently and I'll explain that a little bit later on. But the fact that I offer returns on items that technically I can't resell. So if somebody lights a candle one time, they don't like it and they want to return it or they want to exchange it. Obviously, I'm not able to then resell that item. So it is a loss for me. Now, I know that a lot of people are worried about people, um, about customers taking advantage of a policy like that. I personally haven't experienced this at all with the customers that I have. Um, the whole reason behind having this refund policy is that I just wanna make sure that every single person who interacts with me has a very positive experience. I want people to enjoy their candles. I want them to get a scent that they like. So if they get a scent and they really do not like it and they really wanna try a different scent, then I have no problem sending them out another one and exchanging that for the other one. Now, hopefully in most of those situations, somebody hasn't already burned the candle. They just smell the cold throw. They don't like it. So they're going to do an even exchange so that I'll be able to then resell that unburned candle. That would be an ideal situation. But even if they did burn it because they're thinking, well, maybe it'll smell a little different while it's burning and they still don't like it. I just really want to make sure that everybody is having the best interaction with my business as possible. However, sometimes a customer is just not meant to be your customer. There's just, there's something there. They either don't like the performance, they don't like the sense that you have, and they just, no matter what you do, there's no making them 100% happy with the experience of your product. And it just is what it is. And that's okay to happen. And you can still do the best you can with customer service and handling, handling it in the best way so that they don't leave with a negative experience to where they're going to like talk about it on social media or tell a bunch of people not to shop from you. There's still a way for it not to work out, but for them to still leave like, okay, well, they did everything they could to, you know, try to make it right for me. And I did have a situation, I think I've I think I've talked about this before in a previous video a long time ago. It was about a year and a half to two years ago, I had somebody order from me a candle and they told me that it was very weak, the hot throw was really weak and they couldn't smell it while it was lit. So I basically was really curious because I know that my candles are really strong so I had them send it back to me and I had them choose another scent um, for them to try out instead. And I kind of gave them options of scents that I know are like really, really strong um, and that I know have a really powerful hot throw. So I sent it to them as well. And I still got feedback that it just was not that strong. And um, they weren't really upset. It was more of just the fact that maybe they were disappointed and just kind of reiterating that information. So after two candles that I know were like really strong and I just, I didn't have any other ones that I could suggest that would be really, really strong. And I just didn't want to keep the back and forth going on. So I just basically refunded them the purchase, told them they could keep the candle and you just kind of leave it at that. And it's okay to have situations like that happen. But the most important, 
important thing that I like to do in any situation when a customer is reaching out to me about uh, an issue, a question, a concern with their order, with the products that they received, I just want to make sure that number one, they're being heard because that is like, that was like the number one thing I learned in customer service. When a customer is really upset, you let them talk, you let them vent, you let them get it out and you listen to them. Don't cut them off. Obviously through email, you can't really cut them off, but I just want to make sure that they're being heard and that I can address their concerns and acknowledge, validate their feelings and basically say like, yeah, I would feel the exact same way. You know, I totally understand. And I mean that wholeheartedly. When I get somebody that is upset with a purchase, they're spending all this money on these items and then it's not what they were hoping it was going to be. Um, yeah, I completely understand and I would feel the same way. And I think this is where I start to, in any situation, and this is the best advice I can give to anybody, is that Imagine that the situation was reversed or imagine that it's you and a candle supplier. How would you want them to handle that situation? Because I've seen so many times of people, you know, um, complaining or sharing their negative experiences with candle suppliers, but yet they are not able to then put themselves in the situation of them with their customer because now they're the business who's going to be losing out money. But you really do have to think about it in the sense of, how would you want to be treated if you were in the customer's shoes? And that really helps you to act accordingly. So not in every single situation, I'm just going to be like, whatever you want, I'm bowing down to you. That's not what I mean at all. Like, please take advantage of me and take all of my money in my business. It's more or less just being very compassionate, empathetic, understanding, and just assessing the situation. If you have to give a refund, give a refund. This is just me talking to myself. You know, you don't have to do this. This, but this is kind of what I tell myself, like, how am I going to make the situation right for the customer? Do they just want another candle? Do they just want to vent and let me know? I've had, I've had so many people just be like, hey, just letting you know X, Y, Z, and I'll offer to send them something, give them a partial refund, give them something, and they just really wanted to let me know, and uh, sometimes that's all customers need is just to have me is just to have them let me know. Now, I am very lucky and grateful that I don't have a lot of these situations come up all the time, but when they do, this is pretty much how I handle the situation. I just want to make sure that I am addressing each unique situation as in each unique situation. I wanna make sure that I'm asking the right questions, um, making sure that I'm not trying to blame the customer for anything that they've done wrong, but also just try to get some information to see if I can help the situation and troubleshoot the situation without immediately jumping to, okay, I'll just refund you. Because sometimes, that can make the customer feel like, okay, but like, I'm just really have a question about this candle, you know, like it's tunneling or it's not doing this. And if the candle's tunneling and you haven't asked them how long they're lighting it for, and they are only lighting it for 45 minute sessions, then that's kind of the solution to it. Whereas if you were to just refund or send them another candle, that's not really addressing or troubleshooting it if you can in the moment. So it's kind of this like dance in a weird way of just trying to figure out what is, you know, what is the, um, the, I want to say mood or like attitude, the, the vibe that the customer is throwing at me. Are they really upset? Are they just kind of inquisitive? Are they just kind of reaching out, wanting to talk to me and ask questions about the product? So it's really just taking it step by step, hearing them out, seeing if there's any questions I can ask that can troubleshoot it in the moment. Um, and then from there, if there's really a lot of issues or I know that it's something that I've either done wrong or you know maybe it was a bad batch for the candles, whatever it is, then I can take those steps to, um, sometimes I've refunded and shipped them out another candle. Sometimes it's just an exchange. Sometimes it's just a refund. It really just depends on the situation. And then one more thing I wanted to mention about the return process is that um, I do have a business mailbox, which is similar to a PO box. It's essentially just a place where my mail can be delivered that's not my home address. So none of my customers know where I actually physically live. Um, it's just on the return label of the shipping label. So the top left always shows the return address. So that is the address that they will ship the candle back to and it will go back uh, or it will be shipped to my business 
mailbox where I can go and pick it up from there. So it's not actually my physical address. Um, I choose to do it that way just for safety reasons. Um, and I think that's pretty much the, the only reason why, just for safety reasons. So for me, it's worth it to pay yearly for it. I'm actually due to re-up again because I get it every December. Um, great timing, right? Um, but just an overview of the situation of how I handle returns. So I accept any returns or exchanges within 14 days of the purchase price. Most of the situations, the buyer pays the return shipping to ship it back to me. Um, and then I also just address and assess every situation for its uniqueness, try to troubleshoot as much as I can. And if not, I move on to either a refund or an exchange or just kind of some agreement with the customer on what would work best for them. So I really hope that this video helped you out. Again, you do not have to do exactly what I do. You do what is best for you and your business. This is just my personal opinion on the topic. And with that, I'm going to end today's video right here. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave it a big thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you in my next video.